So here's my ramp pump. Um, I don't know that I've even made a, a YouTube video on this yet. That's kind of crazy because it's an amazing thing. Um, so this takes water from about 20 feet above us and sends it up 90 feet with no electricity or any other input other than the water that's driving it, the, the down 20 to create the up 90. That's like, uh, you know, less than 15 PSI is generating 45 PSI or so. Pretty um, impressive old tech, not new technology, 1800s or maybe even earlier. I've heard it actually maybe wasn't invented in Europe at all. And it was um, Arabian in um, origin. I'm not sure, but uh, water hammer, ram pump. So this is normally the excess water of that pond coming down. We've been in quite a dry period for the whole summer in some ways for three years. So that's not running right now, but uh, the bottom pond still has 2 million gallons in it. So we still have a lot of water. So I'm just going to un hook these nothing too exciting here but I'll probably say this on every other video if you haven't epoxy to magnets to the back of your impact driver i guess you like looking for bits a lot more than i do usually have a 5 16 and a quarter inch on it plus like t 20 through 30 and phillips i'd say those are the main ones Those are pretty light gauge, light gauge hose clamps. Often I use the 5 16 ones and wider if I have any pressure. And this is 45 PSI, but it's held up. So I may have to put the torch on it. I should probably put a union here. I do. I have that on the other side. So it's just easy on off because it's going to be a twice a year thing here. Um, probably I should have just brought my, my tubing cutters and cut it. And next year I'd have to put a union on it before I can use it. Um, but for right now, I don't have tubing cutters and I have one of these. So I'll just do that. This is kind of a pain. I don't want to, I may have to drop the camera for a second. Just going to pull this apart. Sorry, I got to drop the camera. There we go. Oh, came right out. Huh. Popped out on its own. That's awesome. Just by softening the plastic right there. So this is the water that's in the drive pipe. So this is the water that's three quarter inch pipe that goes up 90 feet. And I had drained it to about the halfway point a couple weeks ago when I had to get the, a, a cow watering line out of that pond to a different area. Um, and it still had water in it. I damaged it actually with the excavator, which I kind of knew I was going to find it. It's hard to find stuff with an excavator and not damage it, but I repaired it. And then there was still water in that part. It's amazing how much water is in tubes. It's easy to think, oh, a gallon or two will fill this, you know, 400 feet, but it's not, it's a lot more than that. Um, I'm sure you can look it up. It's not a mystery. There's definitely a number as to gallons in pipe per foot but or per a thousand feet so this is still draining <laughs> i almost got caught with my pants down i mean this didn't freeze but last night was 25 and i meant to fully decommission this get all the water out um like two or three weeks ago really i mean i haven't used it in a month since um we didn't need to keep watering but it ran all summer pumped like tens of thousands of gallons of water all summer with no electricity incredible piece of technology this one's from land to house hey dude right there um but you know you can also build them you know he, he's he's great he's been doing it for a while makes it pretty affordably and um so i'm putting it away for the winter this is just to keep sun off it. I mean, it's totally waterproof. But sun kills plastic. That's why I need to... Um, I want to cover up, you know, any of the line. I've buried most of it. 
One little tip here is it works a lot better. People say, although I haven't had enough comparison yet, I'm building a second, putting in a second ramp pump system soon. It's mostly there. Is the last bit of drive pipe wants to be rigid because there's that a pulse of energy that goes back uphill. Um, and and that keeps more power and energy versus energy gets just gets used in expanding the pipe. So um, how ram pump works is really phenomenal. And I would just right off the bat recommend getting it, um, viewing uh, animations of them. They're on, online all over the place. But it's also called a water hammer, which really makes sense if you think about how it functions in that water coming down a hill has energy, right? If it's in a pipe, it has a particularly useful form of energy because that energy can, can be contained laterally when you stop it. And so the check valve, one of the two, the brass check valve in the system here, as this pump's running, will immediately, uh, will drop down and instantly that momentum of water, that whole water column, which is heavy, stops. And the fact that it stops really, really quickly, pretty much instantly, means there's a pulse of energy that's quite high. And the faster it stops, and the more of that water there is, the more energy you can generate. This is turning like 15 PSI into 45. They can go seven to one to seven, apparently. 10 PSI down, 70 PSI out. That's like 150 vertical feet of pushing water. They'll do that. There's another check valve in there. And basically when that, when that, um, that that energy is stopped instantly the pulse that's created um, is captured in the pump because there's two check valves and so that tiny pulse is goes in that water goes in check valves drop i'm not sure what order but there's a check valve at the end of that flow which stops and then there's a brass check valve that also drops and they get this like hammer um percussive action going between them and it's like cocoon cocoon and the uh, that's the water column just going ksh, ksh, keeping flowing you know it starts up here maybe it's going ksh, ksh, ksh. maybe it's 20 feet of water per column per stop per increment i could measure it because that's the waste coming out of the top of the check valve i think i'm getting like um 20 percent efficient i guess you'd call that the efficiency um how much output for input in terms of fuel what which is water in this case and i think i'm using about five gallons or one gallon for every five gallons of no what was it i have it in i think a youtube video i put it online one of my outlets i think it was like um i want to say 20 percent efficient i think it was something like four to one or five to one um but whatever it was, it was a lot better than I thought it was. I thought I'd be getting like 10%, like a tenth of a gallon for every gallon used down here. And it was way more than that. I think if I used 10 gallons, I was getting at least three or four, which would be 30 or 40%. That's higher than I just said, but that's kind of what I seem to recall. It was quite high. In any event, it's a great thing to have as waste because it's water that literally would be running down the slope anyways into this pond in this case. Amazing piece of tech. So... Um, yeah, the more rigid it is at the bottom, especially, but the more of it, the better, I, you know, probably if you could, if money was no option, it would all be steel pipe. Um, but that's obviously has practical challenges. Although one of the main reason the upper, the new ramp pump I'm installing isn't in yet is because I don't want to spend $90 on a three inch piece of conduit which is what they are right now after I didn't want to buy any when they were 70, I thought the price would go down. Well, I didn't necessarily think that, but I thought maybe it would. And now it's 90 and I still think it's probably going to go down, but I could be wrong. And uh, maybe I should just buy the pipe now. There's also some alternatives. Sometimes I, you know, they're free cycle sections of 